Hi everybody, welcome back. We're looking today at Jeremy Duff, Elements of New Testament Greek. We're on the subject of relative pronouns and today we're going to do some slightly more tricky examples. These are all from section 10.1.3 in chapter 10. We're going from English into Greek. Now you might be wondering, and you probably wondered this before, why go from English into Greek when all the stuff you're doing from translating the New Testament is from Greek into English? Well, it just improves your performance because you have to understand it better when you're translating into the language that uh, you're working with rather than translating out of it. And with relative pronouns, this is one of those instances where you really do see the difference. It's uh, really, really valuable, particularly valuable, I think, in this uh, kind of uh, uh, topic, relative pronouns, complex sentences, to go from um, English into Greek. It's the same reason why sprinters who normally do all their races on the flat, you know, nonetheless, sometimes trained by dragging... Uh, tyres behind them up sand dunes. They never have a race up a sand dune, but it just improves their performance on the flat because they're learning to do it in adverse circumstances. So here's what we're doing here. He keeps the bread which he made. This is number nine from the halfway practice. And you can already see the relative pronoun. It's right over here. And so what we need to do is to work out how does the rest of the sentence work? And then we'll figure out which relative pronoun goes in here. So let's do that to start with. Well, you can begin with the main clause very easily. He keeps the bread. Well, he keeps is from I keep, tereo. So it's tero, tereis, tere, terumen, tere, terusin. So this is going to be ter, oops, so daisy, tere. You'll forgive that wobbly eps. No, you won't. No good reason why you should forgive me writing so shoddily. Look, there we are. Just to prove that even though it's late in the day, I can still write. Tere. He keeps, what am I looking down there for? The bread, um, ton, arton, want it in the accusative because it's, <coughs> excuse me, it's the object of the verb. He keeps the bread. Right, now here's where the money, uh, where the, the difficulty starts. Um, he made, well, let's do he made first because um, it's just more straightforward than the relative pronoun. You're more familiar with it. So it comes from poieto, another eto verb. He made, we want aorist don't we so we want an epsilon augment let's write the verb down so poi eto we want an epsilon augment we want a sigma suffix and the epsilon is going to go into an eta because it likes to be long it's what the weak epsilon likes to do so if there's a sigma there it goes to a long e an epsilon poi epo yes and then we want the third singular ending so elusat elusas elusen so epo yesen all right and now we need to work out how we translate this. Well, here's how to do it. Remember that the case of the relative pronoun is determined by its function in its clause, in its part of the sentence, just like anything else that declines according to case. And the relative pronoun is part of the relative clause. That's why it's called a relative pronoun. It's part of this clause. So we need to figure out the case by working out how it relates to this verb. Is it the subject or is it the object? And if there's no verb that it's relating to, if it's in a prepositional phrase, how does it relate to the preposition and so on? That will tell us the case. Then the number and the gender will be uh, determined by matching with whatever it corresponds to its antecedent in the previous sentence. Come to that in a second. First, how does this relate to this? Is it the subject? Is it the object? Which is it? You know. It's the object, obviously. He is the subject of made. He made whatever this is. He made this thing. So it needs to be uh, the object, which means it's going to be in the accusative case. Right. What gender and what number? Excuse me. My leg's hurting today, I don't know why. Okay, he keeps the bread which he made. The bread is the thing that the relative pronoun refers to. It's its antecedent. The bread is masculine and it's singular. So we want the masculine accusative singular relative pronoun. And you know how to find the relative pronouns because they're mostly just like the articles with the tau missing. So instead of Masculine excuse of singular being ton, it will be hon with the rough breathing. So you're going to pop that in there. Ta-da! T 
Terre ton arton, hon epoyesen. He keeps the bread which he made. Can you see now how doing it this way round forces you to wrestle a little bit more with exactly how the relative pronouns work and especially to wrestle with this issue. You've got the gender and the number determined by the antecedent, the case determined by how it functions within its own clause, the relative clause or the dependent clause. That's what you need to get straight in your head. And once you've got that straight, really, it's so easy. And these words just drop out, especially if you use the tips I showed you in the previous video to uh, help you to work those things through. Okay, so just pause one second. I'll do the next example and we'll uh, do a few more together. Okay. Stick around and I'll show you what I do when the camera's normally off. Let's just do... We'll just do, we'll do the next example. It is necessary to love the God who saves us. Here, here's how we go. Uh, it is necessary to love the God who saves us. Let's first identify the relative pronoun. There it is. Now let's translate the rest of the sentence and work out what we do with this. And there are actually some slightly interesting things here. It is necessary translates a little Greek word which you might have forgotten. It is the word day. Day. It is necessary and it's often followed by uh, an infinitive like this. And the question we've got to deal with here is, do we want a present infinitive or an aorist infinitive? You remember the difference. An aorist infinitive is undefined in relation to its aspect. A present infinitive has an ongoing aspect. And most obviously here, it looks like we're going to want an, a, a present infinitive because we don't, we're going to want to say that about loving the God who saves us, aren't we? It's necessary to love him in an ongoing way. So we want to love. It's from phileo. So it's phil is the stem, and then ain. Oops, so lazy. It is necessary to love philane. Right, let's finish off the rest of this clause. The God, it's the object of this. So ton theon is necessary, that is for us, to love the God who, we'll come back to that in a second, saves us. Well, this is going to need the verb sozo. And it's going to be present. It's happening in the present. Um, now, here's the question. Uh, is it uh, going to be uh, uh, first person, second person, third person? Obviously, it's, uh, it's singular because of saves. Um, uh, but uh, is it first, second, third person? In order to get to grips with this, of course, you do need to understand a little about how this relative pronoun is, function, and this is functioning. And this is where you see the cash value of, of going from um, English into Greek. This is the subject of this verb. Just think about it for a second. It's he who saves us. Who's the one who saves us? Well, whoever this is saves us. It's necessary to love the God who saves us. And therefore we want third um, singular present. So, so, zo, so, des, so, des, a. Okay, and we need to remember... This is going to be the subject, so it's going to be nominative. Come back to its case, its gender and number in a second. Uh, finally, though, what's that? Well, that's the first person pronoun. Uh, ego, eme, emu, emoi, hermes, hermas, hermon, hermin. And we want it to be accusative because it's the object of saves. And we want it to be plural because it's us, not me. So that means it's hermas. They fill in ton fet on relative pronoun so they hair mass. Now, the relative pronoun we want is going to be nominative. We're going to get its gender and its number from its antecedent. What's the antecedent of who? Well, what is it in the previous clause which this refers to? It is, of course, the God or just God. And so we want nominative, masculine, singular relative pronoun. And the nominative masculine singular relative pronoun is the one that's a slightly odd form compared to the others. It is, of course, hos. And therefore, the translation of it is necessary to love the God who saves us is de filain ton on hos sodze hermas. Really simple. Now you can see how you reverse the process very easily and why it's so powerful to do my little trick that I showed you in the previous video, just writing down who whom or which, um, whenever you see a relative pronoun, because 
you need one of those three here at this point in the sentence or very nearby very likely uh, in order to, to get the English from the Greek but that's pretty straightforward let's just look at one more together just to ingrain this process of going from English into Greek okay so here we go number 11 still on this same page 115 do you believe the gospel which you heard question mark right as ever identify the relative pronoun here it is we'll come back to that at the end once we've done everything else do you believe the gospel which you heard well it's a question the way we translate a question is by translating it as a statement and then adding uh, question words or a question mark at the end as appropriate let's actually just pop that in now just in case we forget worth doing especially if you're in an exam and it kind of matters that you get these marks right uh, do you believe well that's going to come from you believe um, oh, Duff says this is singular we want the singular uh, of you so uh, pistuo pistuais do you believe pistuais you believe ton euangelion nope because believe, pistuo, uh, takes its object in which case? Dative. Very good. Um, so we want to, you, angelio. Of course, it wouldn't be ton, you, angelion, would it? Because it's neuter. Boom. Total brain fade. Okay, so I'm going to write it down. Neuter. Because otherwise, we're going to get this wrong which would be a catastrophe for me to do that on live video. That would be a nightmare. Um, Pistuase to euangelio. Uh, notice right back at the beginning, um, the way we pronounce the two gammas next to each other is like uh, an n g euangelion. We pronounce it like that. We transliterate it like that. That's why you, it, we have the word evangelist rather than evagalist, um, which would be a real nightmare to say, wouldn't it? All right, enough. Back to the topic. Pistuase to euangelio, which, come back to that, you heard, well, this is going to come from I hear a who o, but you, um, singular, second person, and we want aorist, don't we? Because it sounds like it's uh, not indicating an extended period of time like an imperfect would do. We want an aorist, second singular. So elusa, elusas. Epsilon augment, sigma suffix, and then an as ending. Epsilon augment plus the alpha is going to give you an eta. E -hu -sas. You heard. And the question now is, get rid of all that mess. What number, case, and gender is the relative pronoun? Well... The case is determined by its function. Oh, that pen. Oh, I should have got rid of that two videos ago. Let's have another red one. Excuse me. Right. Oh, magic. Um, uh, what was I talking about? Case. Case is determined by its function in its own clause. And so, which you heard, how does this relate to this? Is it the subject? No, that's the subject. So what is it? It's the object, isn't it? Right? So you heard we want uh, the object, which means this is going to have to be in the accusative case. So the case has been determined by its function within its own clause. The number and the gender are going to be determined by the antecedent, which it must match with. And this, as I noted after having made a mistake, um, is neuter, not masculine, and it's singular. So we want accusative, neuter, singular, relative pronoun. And we just slap it in there, and then the job is done. And the neuter, accusative, singular, relative pronoun, of course, is ho. Except that you're looking down at the uh, your book and realising... Hold on, that looks just like the masculine uh, uh, nominative singular article. And then you go back a couple of pages and you remember that it has its little accent, just like that, to distinguish it from ho, the other ho, which means the. 
And so that's the answer. Pistuace to euangelio ho ercusas? Question mark. Four points for the question in the exam. And by now, you're getting the hang of how we use the relative pronoun in Greek. So great work. Well done. I suggest you finish off the rest of those halfway practice questions and we're coming back to some other interesting and intriguing aspects of sentences which we've not looked at yet in section 10.2 when we look at slanted questions but for now keep working 10 20 minutes a day 30 minutes a day five or six days a week you'll have nailed this and be reading the new testament in greek in no time at all bye for now